bodies. You have also sought to repress our souls. You have tried to deny, obscure, and annihilate our customs, our culture, our sense of national identity and manly dignity. Kennedy, Eastland, 
There's no difference between them. So that means that Kennedy, Goldwater, and Johnson basically was committed to supporting and saving the same racist capitalist system. The black man has been cut out of the book of American history. His contributions in war and peace, in science and art, have been obscured, neglected, or consciously suppressed. Who among us know of creative minds like Banneker, Carver, or Charles Drew, and countless others? Of the incredible exploits of the 54th Massachusetts in the Civil War? We must not have the illusion that people are born racist. Racism and the ideology of white supremacy came into being when capitalism became the dominant force in the world. It is used as a method to suppress and exploit people, and as a vehicle for the ruling class to make profit by setting one group of workers against another. Workers are able to receive high wages because of the exploitation of the black workers. But whatever they receive, in no way compares with the massive profit that the bosses make off of their facts. We can rally, we can march, we can riot, we can revolt, but that's not going to change the economic plight of the black masses of this country or in Harlem or any other place. And racism will not be destroyed until its creator Capitalism is defeated. Then we find that the John Birch Society, the Ku Klux Klan, the Minutemen, the Police and Benevolent Association, and all of these right-wing pro-fascist groups are the elements that support the war in Vietnam the most vehemently. an extension of what has gone on in South Africa, of what has gone on in this country and Latin America. The ruling classes throughout the Western world want to control the wealth of Africa, Asia, and South America. The war is over land. Who will control the oil? Who will control the gold? Who will control the diamonds? <laughs> Our 
dossier 54 and one quarter up one half. The United States United government is embarked on a policy of ruling the world. They believe with their atom bomb and with their military forces and with their black helots, they can dominate the world. Lionel Corporation, five and one half up one quarter. Look at that flag over there. The flag that our forefathers fought and died for. It was the flag of a lot of really patriotic people. And a bunch of bastards are making it hated. A bunch of bastards are making it hated in Vietnam. Are making it hated in Dominican Republic. Are making it hated around the world. In the Korean War, the United States found out that Asia and Africa was turning against it because they said this is obviously a savage war of the white people to subdue the yellow people of Korea. So that in this war, the United States government is careful to have as its most obvious, most photogenic troops in the front line, the black people from Harlem and Chicago, and from Mississippi and Alabama. We have to insist that the killing of our colored brothers in other country is no substitute for jobs in the United States. Oh. And then they tell us on top of this that we must go into their army, to Vietnam, to Santo Domingo, to the Congo, to Laos, and to every foreign country to fight for their so-called democracy. Yay! What they want to do is to take the democracy that we have in Mississippi That's and right. give it to the Vietnamese people. Yeah. They want to take the democracy that we have in Selma, Alabama and take it to Vietnam. They want to take the democracy that we have here in Harlem and take it to Santo Domingo. And what's our answer to that? Our answer is no, we are not going to Vietnam. Our answer is no, our black people will not be used as cannon fodder. And our answer is... If we must die, we must die here, fighting right, for our own right, liberation, not right, Vietnam. Right. Right. And revolutions are never waged, swinging, we shall overcome. It's not so good to refer to what you're going to do as a city. Then right there, it can't reach you. Right there, it brings you down. An old woman can fit. An old man can fit. A chump can fit. A coward can fit. Anything can fit. Well, you and I have been fitting long enough, and it's time today for us to start doing some standing.
history is revolutionary nationalism. Black people in this country have had a history of revolutionary nationalism. We have had a history of rebellion. We do not have a history of nonviolence. We have had Nat Turner. We have had Prasso. We have had revolutionary leaders who have gone up against the United States of realism from the time they were able to get away from the yoke and the chain of slavery. And this tradition has come down today where we have seen it manifested in Malcolm X. You have to rely upon your enemy for a job. You're in bad shape. When you have, he is your enemy. Anything. You wouldn't be in this country if some enemy hadn't kidnapped you and brought you here. On the other hand, some of you think you came here on the Mayflower. <laughs> From that alone, one can see that the Black Panther Party is a true menace to the United States government. If the Panthers were left right, fewer of them would be put in prison. Panthers are not indiscriminately defending black people. In a nation which is a fortress, they are trying to protect and radicalize all Americans. They are fighting for an ideology which, being truly revolutionary, is international. Thus, the Black Panther Party finds strength and support in other revolutionary parties throughout the world. For 400 years, black people have been castrated from their own history, and now they rediscover their ancestors in the third world. And the historical parents of the Black Panther Party are called Brother Lumumba, Major Guevara, Mao Tse Tung, Malcolm X, and many great but unknown brothers. And so the Panthers inherit the future. They become men, even as they become revolutionaries. Black people in America are, in fact, a colonialized people. They are in rebellion against the system which has cruelly oppressed them as a minority. In their revolt against the system without justice, but with great power, black people are becoming the revolutionary vanguard of the third world in the territory of the United States. In the third world, the oppressed are being united with a common purpose. Black people in America are fulfilling their revolutionary roles only if by revealing to the self-enslaved oppressor the nature of his plight. They challenge him to a struggle for the liberation of all. We must remember that this system of power does not only destroy our consciousness, but it also tries to corrupt our character. 
we must therefore resist the insidious temptations expended to us by this materialistic society. We must overcome conformity, apathy, and indifference to our condition. We must conquer the defeatist attitude that is the enemy within before we can defeat the enemy without. Why should we integrate? A black man speaks to the white man. Since our struggle is for liberation, why should we want to integrate with slaves? For indeed, you are slaves of your own making. How can we integrate with you who have based your exploitative society on competition, set man against man, has taught your own children that human nature is evil and unchangeable, and that therefore man will not act but out of a selfish incentive. How then could you give us what you yourself do not have? What can you teach us? What can you preach to us? Can you preach us brotherhood? You who, having set man against man, have grown mistrustful of your own brothers, even as you have grown doubtful of your own selves. What can you tell us about manhood? You who at work bend in to your bosses and at home to your women. Can you preach us love? You who have grown fearful to show your feelings? You who cannot give without at once taking? You whose heart is howling from its hollow depth to be filled with what it cannot give? Can you give us your culture? You upon whom capitalism has wreaked the most blighted of its depredations, made you destroy the conscience of the cultures you have sought to adopt from foreign lands. Can we integrate with your truths, you who have forfeited your integrity by perverting labor into a commodity, love into a need, honesty into a slogan, and truth itself into an expedient? You have given a lie to your own heritage of truths. How can you preach freedom to us, you who see freedom in license and not in turning the desirable into the necessary? Can you preach us freedom? You who are immature enough to believe that selfish happiness is the aim of life. You, a man constantly seeking himself. You, a man who constantly wails that he cannot find himself. Ignoring that the best way to lose oneself is to try to find oneself by oneself. Can we integrate with your destiny? You who fearfully and ignorantly refuse to integrate with the advancing forces of mankind. How can we who believe that man's task on earth is to give birth to man integrate with you, with your world in which revolutions are still seen as outbursts of vindictive hatred committed by downtrodden pariahs invidious attempts to grab the riches they have been deprived of. How can you preach humanity to us if the society you yourself established has made you skeptical of man's nobler motives, has withered your hearts to the wretchedness of your brothers, has softened your passions, deprived you of the sense of an ideal, turned you into a nation of non-men desperately seeking their forfeited manhood, what can you tell us about manhood? You who have grown into a breed apart from the rest of mankind, who have become orphans of humanity. 
I am not for our boys, our people, going south in Mississippi and having those savage whites take bicycle chains and axe handles and break the limbs of little boys and girls. I'm not for that. I am for the deacons going there and defending them. taken up arms in their own self-defense. centuries, self-righteously subdued, oppressed, exploited, and murdered not only people alien to you, but also your own. And when these black people wake up and find out for real the trickery and the treachery that has been heaped upon us, you're going to have revolution. And when I say revolution, I don't mean that stuff we shall overcome. That's no revolution.
that common to all of us against the enemy who is common to all of us. We will not turn aside. Our forces cannot be dammed up. National catastrophe can only be avoided if the whites abandon their vain dream of racial superiority. The gathering momentum of the black militant must attract to his revolutionary banner those advanced sectors of the exploited whites who by making common cause with their black brothers can develop a fulfilling creative social order. Of the nations formerly called Indochina, Vietnam is the oldest. the same world before you have understood that there may be no world anymore unless you yourself have been first freed from what has enslaved you unless you have first understood that mankind is what its revolution is and that our fight is not merely for more bread but for a different taste of bread in man's mouth 